Welcome back to Tech Day's 10 Minute IG Jams. I'm Tech Day's Managing Editor and we, today we are looking at Turnitin. Turnitin is an edutech company that's renowned for supporting academic integrity in schools and universities worldwide, including in Australia and New Zealand. Chances are that if you've been through a university in, in Australia and New Zealand in the last 20 years, your work has likely passed through Turnitin. However, Turner's, Turnitin's Asia Pacific office was only established in 2016, led by APAC Regional Vice President, James Thorley. Today, we're speaking to the man himself, James Thorley. Welcome, James. Hi, Sarah. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very nice to be today. Okay, thank you. So let's get stuck into it. For someone who hasn't deployed Turnitin before, what are your key products and offerings? Our mission uh, at Turnitin is to ensure the integrity of global education and to meaningfully improve learning outcomes. And we aim to do that through uh, a number of tools uh, to help schools deliver better assessments to their students um, in a more efficient way and also in a way that maintains the integrity. Uh, so we have a, a, a range of tools that address secondary education, higher education, also research, professional qualifications. Um, there's Feedback Studio, Authenticate, Gradescope, ExamSoft. Um, I won't go into the full details of all of them at the moment, but um, some of them are uh, at higher education, some at secondary, some crossover. Um, but the, the focus for all of them is on assessment and on integrity. Uh, we are a, uh, the company HQ is in the US, but even before the pandemic, we were very dispersed globally. Um, as you said, the, the office here in Australia has been open since uh, 2016. We have a number of other small offices across Asia now as well. Um, and, you know, in future, we do see ourselves as being a very global company with not one HQ in any one location. Brilliant. So can you talk a little bit about your most recent product uh, improvements or innovations? Yeah, there's two things that I'd like to mention for this. So firstly, is a tool um, that we've developed that really helps address contract cheating. So for those that don't know, contract cheating is essentially where a student outsources their work to a third party, so they're not doing the work themselves. And um, it's both uh, more serious and harder to detect than sort of traditional copy-paste, uh, you know, plagiarism, uh, as we'd say. And now a number of years ago, um, Australian universities really came to us and said, this is becoming an increasing problem in our universities. And can you help us address that? So we've worked with universities, in particular universities here, UNSW, um, to develop a tool to really help them address that, both at the individual um, instructor, individual lecturer level, and um, as a university as a whole. Um, it took a lot of effort. We had to work with these universities and look at the data, see what the insights were telling us, and then pull that together in a way that um, gave the best possible guidance in terms of um, if there was an issue and what to do with it next. Um, it's been released um, uh, a couple of years ago, but specifically last year, we really saw um, increasing interest um, and adoption. And I'm actually, we're very proud of the impact it's had, particularly in, here in Australia, where it was, uh, uh, the, the interest was greatest. Uh, the second thing I'd like to discuss is our product grade scope. So, uh, Gradescope initially was uh, developed with the idea of STEM subjects in mind, so that's science, technology, engineering, maths, where a lot of the assessment um, is or was done on pen and paper, because if you're uh, drawing diagrams, writing formula, et cetera, then it's still very much a, a handwritten um, exercise. And so we developed that initially with the idea uh, of taking the assessment of it into an online environment where the process could be a lot more efficient and you wouldn't lose any of that data that was, you know, would be remain on paper as it were, which you then eventually obviously you don't keep forever and you, you can't do anything with it. Um, now, of course, when the pandemic hits and everything shifts online, it really changes everything. We'd already had plans to broaden uh, the tool to address more subject types and different assessment types. Um, but the pandemic really accelerated everything and we, we came out with online assessment types and um, we saw a huge increase in usage um, last year, especially. And again, the feedback that we get from, from users of the tool in terms of the impact it's having on them, particularly at this moment, is uh, really rewarding and, um, and really powerful. 
Brilliant. So you've talked a little bit about contract cheating, but what other trends are your product development teams uh, really laser focused on at the moment? So this started again before the pandemic. You know, a lot of conversations we were having with universities were was around um, more authentic types of assessments. So um, especially again here in Australia and New Zealand, there's a, there's been a move of trying to get away from exams as a type of assessment because um, they're not always the best test of learning and they don't really represent a type of uh, challenge or a type of assessment that you're going to face in the real world um, post-university. Uh, so universities uh, in particular have been trying to, to move to more uh, different, more um, authentic types, which can vary greatly depending on the subject, depending on the level, etc. Um, but there's a number of uh, challenges that they face in doing that. Um, so to do authentic assessment at scale is very hard. There's a whole change management process, of course. You're dealing with people who've maybe been setting assessment in the same way for an awful long time. So there's you know, staff education that needs to be had. And it also poses different challenges when it comes to integrity. So of course, in an exam environment, you can imagine someone walking up and down the rows of um, seats, um, but in an online environment, it's a lot more complicated and, and dynamic than that. Um, now, when COVID hits, uh, again, it disrupts everything. Everything has to move online quickly. But of course, in any situation like that, there's also, it can be a catalyst for change. And it, because it made um, a lot of academics think about what they were doing. Okay, how do I transfer this into an online environment? Is it going to work? Is it still um, relevant for me? In some cases, yes, I can transfer it to say uh, an exam online, which is great. And we also are interested in servicing that. But also, if you're wanting to change things and make things more authentic, what does that look like? So these are the conversations that we're really having right now with a lot of universities. And from a product perspective, what we're uh, going to be planning on doing is building um, a platform to really serve these needs. So really look at all of the different assessment tasks. Um, how can we um, facilitate that in the best way? Very much looking at the, the data side of things. So how can we service, surface the data to facilitate um, better assessment types to, to support essentially the, the lecturers in creating these assessment types? And um, how as well, of course, can we build in integrity to the whole process? And so integrity, not just in, the, in terms of ensuring the student integrity, but ensuring the integrity of the assessment itself. So that's a huge task, I would say. It's a huge challenge, um, but it's also a huge opportunity. And um, it's going to be not just a focus for this year, but for the coming years in terms of how do we um, uh, roll out, introduce, develop this and iterate on this platform that can help address these needs. And I think right now the focus is a lot on the university market because um, that often is, is where the greatest need is because they have the, the, the scale and uh, you know, they have the, um, uh, the, the, the greater need to change to somewhat. But over time, I could see it impacting on every aspect of the education system. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about uh, when the APEC offices were established, but what other infrastructure and resources do you have here in Australia and New Zealand? Yeah, so we, we established the office um, at the start of 2016. Prior to that, we did ha already have a, a, a number of customers here. We've had uh, a large number of um, universities using our tools um, since the early 2000s in some cases. Um, but we decided to open the office here, um, essentially to better serve those customers and, of course, to expand our, our presence more generally um, with current products and future products. And uh, so we started in 2016 with just uh, uh, three or four staff, and I came over from the UK. And we're now um, at 27 people in the Australian office um, based here in Melbourne, um, so uh, looking at sales, marketing, customer success, and, and technical support as well. Um, and yeah, really the focus is very much on how can we better support the customers, achieve um, their goals with our products, and how can we better um, spread awareness of what we're doing uh, to, the, to the region at large. We do Australia, um, uh, New Zealand, and Hong Kong from the office here. Um, I'm also, also responsible for the wider APAC region where we have offices in Indonesia, Philippines, Japan, and Korea. Um, and we are seeing growth across the whole of the region, but the, the team based here in Melbourne is primarily focused on the 
on the um, those three markets. Brilliant. Okay, so if end user organization or education providers wanted to engage with Turnitin, what's the best way that they can do so? So of course you can go to our website, turnitin.com, and we have all of the information there. Um, we have the local uh, contact addresses, etc. Um, we also, I would like to point out, have a uh, vidcast and podcast series called Integrity Matters, um, where we interview um, education leaders on all topics around uh, integrity and assessment. And that's available on, on YouTube and, and on the standard uh, podcast platforms. And of course, you can personally reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. Um, I am on LinkedIn if you, if you have any questions for me personally. But those are the, the channels I, I suggest that you can contact and, and interact with us on. Thank you very much, James. That was a Tech Day 10 Minute IT Jam with Turnitin APAC Regional Vice President James Thornley. Yes, thank you. Thank you thank very much, you. James. Thank you.